Welcome to the Silverthorne Pulse. I'm Kim Jardim with the Town of Silverthorne and I'm here today with Ryan Highland, our Town Manager, to recap our April 12, 2023 Town Council meeting. Thanks for being here, Ryan. Thanks, Kim. So we're going to kick off with our work session, uh, which occurs just right before the Town Council meeting. And uh, there was some discussion regarding the summit stage and some updates that might be occurring. Well, there were updates regarding yeah. summit stage. Um, our Public Works Director, Tom Doherty, was uh, chatting with the council. Um, kind of uh, two things going on there. One, uh, we have a project um, just west of the Market Hall this summer on 3rd Street where we're going to be adding on-street parking about 35 spots and doing curb gutter sidewalk, so uh, working on that uh, pedestrian orientation for the downtown. And we have received a CDOT grant, um, $250,000, so we have some opportunity to stretch some of that downtown work. So um, a couple things related to Summit Stage and Transit, uh, Tom was um, talking to the council about the opportunity, maybe in the future, uh, no promises, but Summit Stage is seeing some um, success with uh, staffing up and so maybe by next winter getting back to 30 minute uh, service on the Silverthorne uh, circulator so again we'll see if that if that happens but if it does um, looking at being prepared in Silverthorne and having another uh, spot for a bus to stop uh, right at uh, 4th and Adams there so the transit station is right there we currently have uh, three uh, spots for buses and so with this grant from CDOT again we can stretch our funds a little more and so council did give the go-ahead to um, do some work at 4th and Adams and add another uh, spot for a bus which great if we have that opportunity to see another uh, bus next winter um, fantastic if not we'll probably just use that as uh, on-street parking temporarily so um, some conversation about uh, the potential for that 30-minute service and then also uh, capital improvement work in the downtown so Great. that's kind of where we started the conversation for the evening excellent let's talk about uh senate bill 23 for a moment a moment do we have um, to <laughs> yes we do okay. there right. there seems to be a lack of support uh mm -hmm. for this uh senate bill can you tell us a little bit about what that's about yeah it's a, it's a pretty complex issue uh and we did spend uh, a fair amount of time talking about this with the council i know that uh statewide a lot of uh, municipalities and everyone is spending a lot of time talking about this so um essentially um as we'll reference in the the regular meeting uh, that occurred after the work session town's got to take a position of some sort on this legislation and so for those that may not be aware there's some legislation proposed that essentially to some degree puts land use control in the hands of the state where historically uh, municipalities have uh, done all of that work through their own zoning and regulations uh, at the local level mm -hmm. and so at its core, there's a lot of concern from municipalities about not being able to control your own destiny. So setting that aside, the conversation is really aimed at housing, and I think uh, every municipality is supportive of that conversation and the importance of that, and I think we all appreciate that um, that is a conversation that's great to have at the forefront of the legislature, but um, there's the local control issue, but then also the mountain community is very, very different than the Front Range. And um, Silverthorne, others in the county, and mm -hmm. mountain towns in general have done a lot of work on housing. Mm -hmm. And I think we're far ahead of where uh, this legislation is aiming. And there's some concern that this legislation might even slow us down and, mm -hmm. and not be helpful. So. Where the town council ended up is uh, the Colorado Association of Ski Towns, we're a member of that group, has been uh, pretty vocal and, and, and a pretty effective lobbying group on this legislation. And we continue to support CAST in that lobbying effort. Uh, the council is opposed to this legislation as it's currently written. Now, there's about three weeks left to see how many amendments and how much change can be made on this legislation and we'll continue to, uh, the council continues to support the Ski Town Association to push forward as many amendments as are possible to get this in a format that 
um, you know, we can work with. So stay tuned. I think if folks are not familiar with Senate Bill 213, they should look it up, look up some articles, and regardless of uh, you know, their position on the matter, reach out to your legislators and let them know how you feel about that. So uh, we did contrast a little bit uh, the approach of that legislation with the way we do things, which is we had a groundbreaking, as you know, um, a few days before council and Smith Ranch Apartments, you know, in a matter of about 11 months, we go from planning to breaking ground and making housing that's truly affordable, deed restricted, um, and that's not really part of the legislation that the state's looking at. The logic there is we'll just build more houses and it'll be affordable. We know that doesn't work up here. Right. Uh, for it to be affordable, we have to be involved and actually have those deed restrictions. So a lot of chatter about Senate Bill 213, and that'll continue over the next couple of weeks, and we'll see where it ends up. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll have an update in a couple of weeks here to share with everybody. Yeah. We'll see how it, we'll know at that point um, kind of how it turns out. Great. So moving on through work session, there was um, a town manager updates on a few items. Um, child care tuition assistance, um, 911 communication center, and staff recruiting and hiring updates. Yeah. Uh, the uh, countywide uh, child care tuition assistance is a conversation that's been going on for quite a while. And uh, each of the communities in Summit have agreed to uh, launch that new program. And so it is a countywide program. Uh, what we talked to council about is we're at the point now where um, the Early Childhood Options nonprofit will be the group that is um, managing that uh, program, and they're getting ready to take applications in May. And so talking to council about um, buttoning up and formally documenting how that process will work. And so intergovern intergovernmental agreements will be needed with all the municipalities and the county and early childhood options. So we're just working through the paperwork, if you will, essentially on that. But um, looking forward to that um, launching in, in May. And so that's, that's pretty big news in the county uh, to have a, a countywide program uh, and have all of the municipalities in the county uh, sure. helping to fund that. So just reminding council of uh, paperwork that they'll be seeing uh, at their next meeting. Great. Uh, communication Center, 911. Yes. Uh, it's another collective effort where uh, each of the municipalities in the county uh, and the sheriff's office all work together um, in a collective effort to uh, fund and operate that 911 center. And so we are in the process of, have just really completed a, an assessment. You need to hire a new executive director and collectively uh, all of the agencies involved said, you know, before we do that, let's take a step back and look at um, how the center's operating and how we might make it uh, improved in the future. So uh, that's been a good process and just gave council a little bit of an update there. Um, the main reason to update them is uh, through that uh, strategic look at the center, uh, we need more staff. And so that's going to cost each of the participating, participating agencies some more money and right. quite a bit more money. And so just giving council a heads up that when we're looking at future budgets, uh, that's going to be coming down the road. But it's a, uh, it's a plan that all of the agencies involved are supporting, and it's something that we need. Obviously, 911 is one of the most critical services. Uh, someone's got to be there to, to pick up that phone and, and be really skilled when they do that. So um, just an update there for council. And then we talked a little bit about recruiting and uh, hiring updates. Um, and I think probably the, the one that's at the, the forefront, uh, at least for the public's visibility, is police chief. And so we are uh, going to be undertaking a recruitment uh, to find a new chief of police. So that is uh, a, big, a big effort that we'll be undertaking. Uh, we're getting closer to selecting a, a recruiter to help us through that effort. And then we just provided some other updates on um, we are uh, interviewing for sustainability coordinator, yes. a uh, community and uh, business liaison position, mm -hmm. and just keeping council up to speed on some of the recruitments that are underway. Uh, and yeah. Great. Excellent. 
Yeah, it's a tough hiring environment, right? If someone has housing here yes. in this community. if you can find folks that are in the community already um, right. and they've got that's the skills, ideal. yeah. Definitely. So moving into the regular town council meeting, we were able to swear in our new council member, Tanisha Spagnolia. Yeah, yeah, Tanisha's first uh, work session and regular meeting. Um, welcome to Tanisha, we're very excited um, from staff uh, to be working with her and we've done some tours around town and I know that she's met with uh, Laura, our finance director, to start digging into the budget and so um, we gave, kind of buried her with information <laughs> I think in the, in the last week or so but excited to be working with her and yeah, got her sworn in um, and kicked off the meeting local business owner and parent to two young children, so yeah. lots of great perspective there. Yeah, yeah, member of the Rotary, member of, uh, member of the Summit Chamber, and then operator of uh, Timberline Restaurant, so very well known in the community. Excellent. And under staff comments, um, it's my understanding Chief Davis wasn't able to make it from Summit Fire and EMS to the meeting. However, he provided some updates regarding yeah. a fire station. He was able to uh, get a text to me before the meeting since he couldn't make it. And so I updated the council on some of the Summit Fire and EMS uh, goings on. And so I'll share that again here. Uh, they had been working on getting a um, engine back in kind of a um, surge capacity in Silverthorne and they accomplished that uh, just yesterday, got moved into a space at Buffalo Mountain Storage and so they're leasing space up there um, and it took a little while, they had to kind of retrofit a little, make sure there was heat in that unit but there is a unit um, back in Silverthorne so that's good. And then uh, also great news, Hyder Construction is who they have chosen uh, to construct the new station in Silverthorne and so they're working forward um, the final details on that contract which will go before their board in May and then SEH is the group that they're working with and have been for a while to design that station and they've got those drawings uh, that they're getting ready for submittal uh, next week so that's where the town will be working with them and reviewing that so Lots of good progress on uh, Silverthorne Fire Station, and thanks to Chief Davis, I know he's really been committed to pushing that forward as quickly as, as possible. So good job to Summit Fire. That's great progress. Yeah. Great update to hear. So I know, yeah, that's a lot of, really important to a lot of our uh, community members, yeah, for and, sure. Yeah, and just to, to uh, a refresher, that is a piece of property that Summit Fire owns that's just north of the, um, Cottonwood Public Works facility that we built a number of years ago, uh, which is just north of the elementary school. If folks are wondering where that uh, will be built, it is uh, right there. Great. Moving into the consent calendar, there was a resolution um, awarding a contract uh, to a contractor um, for the construction of Third Street Road improvements. Yeah, that uh, is the project that I mentioned uh, that we talked about a little bit in the work session, adding 35 parking spots, curb gutter sidewalk to 3rd Street. So um, that'll be a nice uh, parking reservoir for everyone in the downtown. And Great. Um, we'll have some construction starting this spring. Excellent. And there was also a resolution uh, approving the final IGA, otherwise known as an intergovernmental agreement uh, for the new Silverthorne child care facility. Yeah, another kind of final piece of paperwork, uh, just updating uh, a prior agreement where the county and uh, the town are partnering on the uh, construction of the Wildflower Child Care Center mm -hmm. in the Smith Ranch that will open um, later this year. And so uh, just the latest iteration of paperwork that we need to make sure everything's in place for that intergovernmental agreement. Mm -hmm. So uh, huge thanks to the county for partnering and, and they're, the, they're the lead partner on that. We put the land under the deal and uh, a million dollars, but they brought um, many millions uh, to the table mm -hmm. to make that center a reality. So uh, a good partnership and we're looking forward to that ribbon cutting. And again, the IGA just documents the formality of, of that partnership. Mm -hmm. And perfect location for that child care center, right? Adjacent to Smith Ranch yeah. homes and the new Smith Ranch yeah. apartments when that will be coming. Yeah, we did the groundbreaking for Smith Ranch, it's sitting there right in the background uh, and yeah, a very, very nice location. 
Excellent. Under action items, there was a resolution, and we already touched upon this, um, opposing the statewide land use and zoning, um, the, the Senate bill that we just spoke about. Yeah, so a lot of conversation in the work session about that, and then uh, taking a formal position, uh, which as we referenced was um, in opposition unless amended, and we're, we're doing everything we can through the various uh, access that we have to influence those amendments and, and make it work for Silver Thorn. So. Great. And there was a couple of ordinances related to purchase of residential properties that the town is purchasing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we've talked about Smith Ranch. Obviously, uh, we are doing new construction uh, to try and bring more workforce housing. We know that uh, given where we live, there's not an endless supply of land. We're basically uh, almost out after we build the Smith Ranch. So part of the strategic housing plan for workforce housing is to purchase existing units. Uh, and so we're doing that here and there, uh, a couple of uh, opportunities to purchase, deed restrict, and then resell um, with the restriction that you have to be working 30 hours or more a week in the county to make that purchase. So a couple more units in Silverthorne that we're pursuing there, and council gave the go ahead. So we'll come back with second readings uh, on those ordinances at our next meeting. Great. There was also an executive session about um, a property downtown that the town might purchase. Yeah, uh, we're, we've got uh, some conversations going on with a landowner in the downtown, uh, another opportunity to potentially uh, redevelop and maximize the uh, use of a property downtown, which could Im involve some workforce housing as well, potentially in the future. So um, those conversations are going on and then um, in the future, as we were just talking about with those ordinances, if we move forward, uh, the public would see those on a formal agenda and they would be um, in the regular meeting. So I would anticipate that might happen in the next couple meetings. Great. So just a couple of reminders for our community. The Recreation Center is closing April 17th through May 7th, and that is for the renovation projects that will be occurring within the Recreation Center. Uh, Breckenridge Recreation Center is honoring uh, passes over in Breckenridge yep. during that time, and then uh, the Recreation Center will reopen um, after May 7th, and there will be ongoing construction, but the facility will be open again. Yeah, and then in the fall, we'll have another uh, hard closure again, uh, thanks to Breck. In the fall, they'll partner with us again, and um, our patrons can, can experience their great center during that time. And just around the corner is May 5th, which is our first Friday Locals Appreciation Party. And that's on the Silverthorne Performing Arts Center lawn, and that's a really popular one. Maybe yeah. one of the big, maybe the biggest one that we have yeah, every that, year. That one is a big one, so hope to see everybody there. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.